Hey guys, welcome to another EDH Deck Tech episode brought to you by the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon and I'm super glad to have you here. Today's deck tech will be on Emil the Blessed, and I'm super excited to show you this deck on this beautiful unicorn that's being printed in the new Jumpstart set. But before we dive into today's deck tech, I'd like to just give a huge shout out to this channel's sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, you need to check this store out. They've got an amazing staff and a huge selection on deck boxes, card sleeves, dice, an amazing card archive, so they're always going to have the card that you need. They've also got a ton of accessories for D&D and Warhammer and other board games if you like things other than magic and all around it's just a great store we've been going there for a long time and we love them also if you're new here to the channel we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button it's quick easy and free and it really helps us out all right let's get into today's deck with that out of the way like i said earlier this deck is on emil the blessed which is a brand new legendary creature being printed in the jumpstart set so emil the blessed is a legendary creature unicorn that costs two white white and it reads Pay three generic mana and exile another target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Also, whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you may pay hybrid green-white. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on it. If that creature was a unicorn, you get to put two plus one plus one counters on it instead. So there's a bunch of text on here, and the bottom half cares about unicorns and creatures entering the battlefield, and the top half cares about exiling creatures. This deck is going to be focused on the top half, because unfortunately there aren't a ton of unicorns to really focus on, so we couldn't really make a super efficient unicorn tribal deck, but hey, maybe in the future we'll get there. So the first ability deals with exiling creatures and immediately returning them back onto the battlefield under their owner's control. This ability is oftentimes referred to as blinking a creature, and I'm going to be calling that blink or blinking several times throughout the video. So the strategy for this deck is we're going to be playing a bunch of creatures that have relevant enter the battlefield triggers or leave the battlefield triggers, and we're going to be kind of building our strategy around abusing those those triggers. So blinking things multiple times in a turn or blinking things throughout the turn cycle and getting a ton of value out of that. We'll be going over those value pieces later on and, and how the deck plans on winning. But I'd like to just start off by going over the ramp because that's usually the most important part of any deck is the ramp. And we want to focus on getting a meal out as quickly as possible because the deck functions so much better with it out on the table. Also, we're going to be really mana intensive as we have a fairly high curve and we're going to want to be dumping lots of mana into a mill's ability. So we, we need to make sure that we have enough mana to do that. So we're playing Arcane, Signet, and Soul Ring as our mana rocks. They're just super great mana rocks, super consistent, always going to give us what we need. And then we're playing Lanoir Elves and Lanoir Visionary, which very, they're just mana dorks in this deck. Lanoir Visionary, when it does enter the battlefield, we will draw a card, but really we need it as a mana dork. We're then playing Wall of Roots, which can give us mana immediately when it comes comes into play. And then we're playing Cultivate and Sky Shred Claim as some Sorcery Speed Ramp that get lands in our hand and lands into play. We're then playing Oketra's Monument, which does serve two purposes in this deck. It reduces all of our white spells by one, so if we get this down on turn three, or turn two even, we can get a meal out even earlier, and it will make us tokens every time we cast a white creature, which there is a token sub-theme in the deck, which we'll be going over later. We're then playing Smothering Tithe, because it is one of the best cards in white right now. Um, giving us a treasure token every time our opponents draw is amazing. If our opponents are drawing three plus cards per turn, that is an extra activation of a meal that we get each turn. And then we're playing Growing Rites of Itlamok and Cryptlith, right? Which are in the deck. Like I said, we have a sub theme of tokens. So Growing Rites of Itlamok, when it flips over into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun, is effectively a Gaius Cradle, which is amazing in this deck. And Cryptlith, right, is going to turn all of the tokens we're making into mana dorks. We're then playing Farhaven Elf and Wood Elves, which both of them, both of which when they enter the battlefield, they can put a land directly into play. And being able to blink them repeatedly with a meal, getting extra lands later in the game is also really relevant. I've also included Seedborn Muse and Wilderness Reclamation in the ramp category. Even though they don't give us any additional lands, they let us access our lands several times throughout the turn cycle, which is basically just as important as ramping anyways. Being able to untap all of our permanents with Seedborn Muse is amazing and Wilderness Reclamation untapping all of our lands at the end of the turn is also super powerful. So those are super good cards in the deck. 
So with our ramp played out, let's go over the main synergy of the deck, which is blinking our creatures for value. We've got a wide variety of ETBs and leave the battlefield triggers that we're looking to abuse with Emil. Some of these creatures cost upwards of 5-7 to seven mana, so only paying 3 mana to get that trigger again with Emil is super efficient and where we want to be. So we've got our Mata Worm, which is a massive creature. It costs 6 mana, and when it enters the battlefield, it makes a 5-5 five, five green worm creature token with trample, and it also has trample. So getting 2 bodies, and then blinking that later in the game, getting more worms for 3 mana is super efficient. We then have Thrag Tusk, which has an ETB and a Leave the Battlefield trigger, which is awesome. So when it enters the battlefield, it's going to gain us 5 life, and when it leaves the battlefield that's going to give us a 3-3 green beast creature token which is really efficient. We then have Tristani Discordant which which does buff all of our creatures by plus one plus one but we're really focused on that ETB which gives us two white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. It also has a super niche triggered ability which at the end of our turn each player gains control of all creatures they own. Don't know if that will ever come up but really is in this deck to make tokens. And then the best token maker in the entire deck is Avenger of Zendikar. When it enters a battlefield, we are going to create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each land we control. It also has landfall, and whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each plant we control. So, it's going to make us a ton of plants, and we're probably going to be hitting lands every turn, so they're just going to get bigger and bigger. And if we get really lucky and we have Wood Elves or Farhaven Elf, and we can blink those multiple times, it's not impossible that we put five or six counters on all of our plant tokens, and that alone will probably win us the game. Along with making a bunch of tokens, I've got other ways in this deck to synergize with making tokens. Cards like Anointed Procession, that's going to double our token production, or Cathar's Crusade, which anytime a creature enters a battlefield under our control, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each of our creatures. That is going to pump up our team so much, that could probably run our opponents over. Or Divine Visitation, which when we make all of our little tokens, we're actually going to be making Sarah Angels, which is absurd. We've also got a bunch of X spells like Secure the Wastes, White Sun Zenith, or Martial Coup, which for however much mana we pump into it, we're going to be getting that many tokens as well, which is super good in this deck. We've also got Blessed Sanctuary, which has some awesome synergy with our commander. The first part of it reads, prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control. That stops our creatures from being blown up by, you know, Pyroclasms or Blasphemous Act, which is awesome. But it also says that whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can create a 2-2 white unicorn creature token, which if we have some extra mana lying around, we can give each of those unicorns uh, two plus one plus one counters with Emil's second ability. Next up, we have Mimic Vat, which doesn't make a ton of tokens on its own, but throughout the game, there's going to be board wipes, and we can steal some super spicy creatures from our opponents, or maybe we can exile our own Avenger of Zendikar underneath it when it dies, and we can be making Avenger of Zendikars every turn, which is nuts. We're also playing Skull Clamp, which I've included in the token synergy area because... For all of these little 1-1 tokens that we're making, Skull Clamp basically becomes draw two cards for one mana. So Skull Clamp is a basic auto-include in any token making deck. In addition to ETB triggers that make us tokens, we've got some other just really good ETB just value blink effects. So cards like Acidic Slime, which when it enters a battlefield, we can destroy an artifact, a land, or an enchantment, which that flexibility is awesome. And being able to blink this several times can be super backbreaking if we want to be mean and start blowing up our opponent's lands. I would start with destroying all the artifacts and enchantments before I get to that point, but that is also a possibility. We've also got Angel of Grace, which is super cool. When it enters the battlefield until end of turn, damage that would reduce our life to less than one reduces it to one instead. So this can be basically a trump saving card. If we're about to die, if somebody swings out at us, we can flash this in, keep our life total at one, and we could probably blink this a bunch to just kind of keep us at that one life total but not losing. So that's it's a really good card in the deck. We then have Cavalier of Dawn, which is also another backbreaking removal piece like a Civic Slime. When it enters a battlefield, we can destroy one non-land permanent, and its controller gets a 3-3 colorless golem creature token. So it's kind of like a beast within that we can basically abuse and blink several times. It also has a death trigger. When it dies, we can return an artifact or enchantment from our graveyard to our hand. We've got some spicy artifacts and enchantments in the deck, so that's also not something we want to look over. We then have the good old humble Elvish Visionary, which when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. Sometimes we'll be really willing to pay that three mana with a meal just to draw a couple cards. So super good card in the deck. We then have Eternal Witness, which is probably one of the best cards in green. When it enters the battlefield, we can return any card from our graveyard to our hand. 
We then have Reclamation Sage, which when it enters a battlefield, it can blow up any artifact or enchantment. Along with the Elvish Visionary, we're also playing Wall of Blossoms, which is essentially the same card. When it enters a battlefield, it's going to draw us a card. Next up, we have Sun Titan, which when it enters a battlefield or attacks, we can return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this is super useful. If maybe one of our blink pieces like died earlier on in the game maybe we need to get an eternal witness back to get something else back from our graveyard or we need to get reclamation sage back into play to blow up a problematic artifact or enchantment whatever it is sun titan is going to have tons of targets for us to hit we then have village bell ringer which when it enters a battlefield we get to untap all creatures we control so what we can do with this is maybe we've had to completely swing out an opponent to take them out and we don't want to be left super vulnerable so what we can do is we can blink village bell ringer to untap all of our creatures essentially give giving our entire board pseudo vigilance so we don't have to feel so bad about swinging out or tapping out to take out another opponent or to get through with some attacks. Next up we have Knight of Autumn which has three different modes we can choose from when it enters a battlefield. We can either put two plus one plus one counters on it if we need it to be a bigger body, we can destroy an artifact or enchantment, or we can gain four life depending on our needs. I would say that more likely than not we're going to want to be blowing up artifacts or enchantments. Our opponents are going to have a really hard time keeping any artifacts or enchantments on the battlefield with all of these different ways we have in our deck of interacting with them. All right, so we don't want to rely solely on a meal to abuse these under the battlefield triggers. So I've included some other redundant blink effects in the deck to make sure that we can always blink our creatures. So we have Charming Prince, which when it enters the battlefield, we can choose one. We can either scry two, gain three life, or exile another creature we own and return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step. We've also got Felidar Guardian, which when it enters the battlefield, we can blink any permanent we control and return it to the battlefield. We've also got Core Sky Fisher, which is, works a little bit differently than the other ones. When it enters the battlefield, we can return a permanent to our hand and then we can recast it. So we're not necessarily blinking it, but we are getting another enter the battlefield trigger. We then have Restoration Angel, which is a functional copy of Felidar Guardian, except for it has flash and when it enters a battlefield, we can blink a creature we control. As far as instants go, we have Eerie Interlude and Ghost Away, which are both super cool cards. They exile any number of creatures we control and return them from the battlefield at the end of the turn. Ghost Away doesn't give us the choice, Eerie Interlude does, but effectively we're probably going to be targeting as many things as we can to abuse their enter the battlefield triggers again. So we've got some extra card draw in the deck with Guardian Project, which is super cool. Whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, you can draw a card. So in Commander, we're Singleton. We're not gonna have two creature cards with the same name. We're always gonna be able to draw a card. As long as it's not a token, basically all of our creatures become Elvish Visionaries, which is actually super, super, super powerful. We've also got a card called Aid from the Cow, which isn't technically card draw, but it is really good card advantage. It's an enchantment with the ability Revolt, which at the beginning of our end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent, you can put it into play. Otherwise, you put it on the bottom of your library. We are running basically all permanents except for eight instances and three sorceries. So more often than not, we're going to hit a permanent. And with Emil's ability being able to be activated each turn, we can trigger aid from the cow each and every turn, which is super cool. In addition to our enter the battlefield triggers that negatively impact our opponents, we do have some other ways in the deck to interact with what our opponents are doing. We've got the classic beast within instant speed destroy any permanent as controller makes a 3-3 green beast creature token. And we've also got swords to plowshares which is just a super catch-all creature removal spell. The fact that it exiles the creature is super relevant against graveyard strategies. So in addition to source of postures, we have another way of exiling creatures. We have Palace Jailer, which when it enters a battlefield, we become the monarch. And when it enters a battlefield, we can exile target creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. So when we become the monarch, we lose the monarch by somebody hitting us and doing damage to us. And we can become the monarch again when we hit somebody else with combat damage and we become the monarch again or we could just blink palace jailer with a meal and we can exile a different creature maybe if something even scarier comes into play than the original creature that we exiled or maybe the original creature isn't as relevant anymore because something else got removed it's a super flexible piece of interaction i really like to see that in this deck and we've also got veil of summer which we draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn and spells we control can't be countered this turn and us and permanents we control gain hexproof from blue and black until end of turn. So this just does a ton for one green mana. All right, next up, let's go over the absolute win cons. I say that because 
it's very possible that we're just going to outvalue our opponents and rush the board with tons of permanents, tons of creatures, tons of tokens, but sometimes we're going to need just a little bit extra to close out the game. So these are kind of backup win cons, but some of them are actually pretty solid. Um, the first of which is Crater Hoof Behemoth. It's obviously a super good card is in almost every single green deck that wants to attack, almost in any deck that wants to win by attacking anyways. It's just a super good card. It actually does have some extra synergy with Emil because let's say for example, we cast our Crater Hoof and it, it doesn't give a large enough buff to our creatures to take everybody out. If we can, if, it, if Crater Hoof can survive just one rotation, we can blink it a couple of times and that will surely get rid of our opponents. We've also got a kind of glass cannon combo with Ashnod's Altar. With any of our token ETB creatures like Avenger of Zendikar or Armada Worm, any or any token or any ETB trigger that makes a couple of tokens, we can sacrifice those tokens to the Ashnod's Altar and then blink it again with... Emil, which will give us infinite mana, in, infinite enter the battlefield triggers, um, infinite tokens in the case of Avengers of Zendikar. It just, we get a ton out of that. We do have some ways of sinking that infinite mana. We can sink it into any of our X spells that create tokens. Secure the Wastes and Whites and Zenith are instant speed, so we can, at the end of our opponent's turn, go infinite, make a bunch of tokens, um, and then on our turn, swing for the win. Otherwise, we have Altar of the Brood, which if we have that out, and we infinitely blink any of our creatures, we will just mill our opponents out. And if we can drop down Altar of the Brood early on, we are blinking enough things and creating enough tokens that it's not impossible that we mill our opponents out naturally. We've also got another super fringe combo that I found with Good Fortune Unicorn and Twilight Shepherd. And the way that works is Good Fortune Unicorn gives all of our other creatures when they enter the battlefield a plus one plus one counter, which also is just super good in the deck. That's like basically a lord for our entire deck. So Twilight Shepherd is a flying vigilance angel with persist. And when it enters the battlefield, we get to return to our hand all cards in our graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So that is good enough on its own, even without going infinite of getting all of our things back from our graveyard to our hand. But because it has persist when it dies, it, if it didn't have any minus one, minus one counters it will come back into play with a minus one minus one counter but if we have good fortune unicorn out that plus one plus one counter from good fortune unicorn and the minus one minus one counter from the persist trigger will actually cancel each other out giving us a twilight shepherd with no counters on it and with ashnod's altar we can just keep sacrificing twilight shepherd to make the infinite mana and that will also give us infinite enter the battlefield triggers for our altar of the brood all right, now let's go into the last category, which I've just kind of put as the catch-all category. So we've got some ways of protecting our strategy and just a couple of extra synergy pieces that I couldn't really find a place for. So we've got Lightning Greaves, which is really good for two mana. It's an artifact equipment. It costs zero to equip and it gives the equipped creature haste and shroud. So we want to stick that on a meal and just leave it there. We want to protect a meal at all costs. We've also got Destiny Spinner, which is, which is a really cool creature. It says creature and enchantment spells that we control cannot be countered. So that will stop our opponents from completely just saying no to our strategy. Destiny Spinner just says no back to their counter spells, and I love that. And then we have Mother of Runes, which is a one mana human cleric, and she has an activated ability that says tap target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. So we usually want to use this to protect a meal from a target removal spell. We are in addition to Mother of Runes, we're also playing a unicorn that can protect our board, and that is Loyal Unicorn. It has Vigilance and it has Lieutenant, which means at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control our commander, we can prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to creatures we control this turn, and other creatures we control gain vigilance until end of turn. So with this out, we really have no fear about attacking. Our creatures aren't going to take damage, and they're not going to be tapped. So this is a super cool card in the deck. Also playing Privileged Position, which is a very powerful enchantment. It says other permanents you control have hexproof. This will shield our whole board from removal. We're also playing Eladomri's Call, which is an instant speed creature tutor. We have to reveal it, we can put it into our hand, but this can find us our Avenger of Zendikar, or maybe our Reclamation Sage, or whatever creature at that time is the piece that we need. It's a super efficient tutor. Also playing Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, which is a legendary planeswalker, Vivian, and she enters with four loyalty counters. She has a static ability that says we can cast creature spells as though they had flash, which that alone is super powerful. She then has a plus one loyalty ability, which reads until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. 
but she's really in here for that minus two. It gives us a ton of value. It says, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And for as long as it remains exile, we can look at it and cast it if it's a creature card. And we can also cast it at flash speed because Vivian lets us do that, which is super cool. And for the mana base, we're playing 13 forests and 11 planes. We've got a pretty even split between um, white and green. So we'll have a deck list in the show notes so you can just look over the list. But we're also playing playing a couple of tap lands with Blossoming Sands, Canopy Vista, Fortified Village, Cross and Verge, Razor Verge Thicket, Selesnia Guildgate, Selesnia Sanctuary, Sungrass Prairie, Sun Petal Grove, Temple Garden, Temple of Plenty, and Windswept Heath. Realize Selesnya has a lot to do with the sun and grass. <laughs> Must be something to do with plains and forests. All right, and with that, this show is coming to a close. Thank you guys so much for listening up until this point. I really hope you enjoyed this deck. This is a super cool deck, and I'm really excited to see a Blink Matters theme in white green. Most of the Blink decks are in white and blue, but I think that this is just as viable as any of those. So this is a super cool deck. Let me know if there are any cards that I missed or maybe cards that you would be playing, or if you've already built the deck, let's see your list. Let's see, um, compare and see what you're playing and what we're not playing. Just one more quick reminder, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet and you like the show, be sure to do that so you don't miss our Deck Tech episodes that we release every Monday and you won't miss our gameplay videos that we release every month. Again, thank you guys so much and I hope you have an excellent week.